Last night, we, we lost a brother. We lost a family member. Right hand. And a big right hand. Boom. From Bumbo. Sporting events are thrilling filled with ecstasy and excitement, but they have also been the site of some of the most devastating catastrophes. Today, we have a thought-provoking and solemn topic to explore. We'll be delving into the lives of renowned athletes whose journeys in the world of sports tragically ended right before the eyes of their spectators. These individuals left an indelible mark on their respective sports, and their stories serve as powerful reminders of the fragility of life, even in the arena of competition. Join us as we pay tribute to these 15 extraordinary athletes and reflect on the impact they had on the sporting world. Number 15, Howard Glenn Football's Darkest Hour. Howard Glenn, a name that might not ring a touchdown bell for today's football aficionados, but his tale serves as a poignant reminder of the gridiron's knack for turning human bodies into crash test dummies. Born on December 26, 1939, Glenn was the unsung hero on the offensive line for the New York Titans, which would later morph into the New York Jets. He wasn't just any lineman, he was a walking testament to human tenacity and athleticism. Now let's take a time-traveling DeLorean back to October 9, 1960. The New York Titans faced off against the Houston Oilers at Yepa's Sun Stadium in Houston, Texas. The game was like any other typical brawl of that era, with players treating each other's bodies like a piñata at a kid's birthday party. Glenn, no stranger to this rough rodeo, found himself at the receiving end of some bone-rattling tackles. You see, back in those days, football was a bit like a bizarre game of who can survive the most body slams. Players often kept going despite injuries that would have made modern doctors faint. In the third quarter, Glenn's condition was more battered than a tomato in a blender. They dragged him out of the game, but it was a case of too little, too late. Shortly after, in the locker room, Glenn pulled off the vanishing act of the century and collapsed. They rushed him to the nearest hospital, but tragically, it was a losing battle. Glenn became the first and only pro football player to meet his maker as a direct result of on-field injuries. The culprit? A broken neck. No thanks to the bone-crushing hits he'd taken during the game. Howard Glenn's story isn't your typical feel-good sports saga. It's more of a cautionary tale, a chilling reminder of the dark side lurking beneath the pigskin veneer. For those who witnessed that fateful day in 1960, it was like watching a horror movie unfold on the field. A stark reminder that football isn't just about touchdowns and cheerleaders, it's a brutal dance with destiny. But here's the silver lining, folks. Glenn's legacy, though marked by tragedy, played a crucial role in transforming football into a safer, more conscientious sport. His story is a beacon, reminding us that no matter how intense the competition gets, we should never play fast and loose with the health and safety of these modern-day gladiators. After all, we'd rather see them scoring touchdowns than checking out prematurely from the game of life. Number 14. Dooku Kim Boxing's Dark Day It was evident that Dooku Kim possessed a tenacious spirit that would one day propel him into the world of professional boxing. Dooku Kim's reputation as a fighter with unyielding determination quickly spread, earning him a special place in the hearts of boxing enthusiasts worldwide. His journey reached a climactic point on November 13, 1982, when he found himself in Las Vegas, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the formidable Ray Mancini. The prize at stake was the WBA lightweight title, and the battle that unfolded would become the stuff of legend. For 14 grueling rounds, these two pugilists exchanged powerful blows, each landing significant punches in a relentless display of skill and heart. The world watched in awe as the match pushed both fighters to their limits. It was a brutal contest, a true test of their mettle. Then came the 14th round, a moment etched in the annals of boxing history. Ray Mancini unleashed a devastating right-hand punch that found its mark, sending Dooku Kim crashing to the canvas. The crowd fell silent as the gravity of the situation became apparent. Kim was carried out of the ring, and a race against time began. Despite the best efforts of medical professionals, Dooku Kim succumbed to a severe brain injury sustained during the match. Number 13. Phil O'Donnell's Sudden Death on Football Pitch Phil O'Donnell, born on March 25, 1972, in Bells Hill, Scotland, was a beloved footballer celebrated for his unwavering dedication to the sport. His career centered around Motherwell FC in the Scottish Premier League, 
Tragedy struck on December 29, 2007, during a match against Dundee United when, in the 72nd minute, O'Donnell suddenly collapsed on the pitch. Despite immediate medical attention, he was later pronounced dead at Wishaw General Hospital due to left ventricular failure of the heart. O'Donnell's untimely passing sent shockwaves through the football community, prompting an outpouring of tributes that highlighted his dedication and contributions to Scottish football. Motherwell FC retired his number 10 jersey as a fitting tribute, and his death underscored the need for rigorous health checks in football, leading to an increased emphasis on cardiac screening for players. O'Donnell's legacy endures as an inspiration to young players and a somber reminder of the potential risks athletes may face in their pursuit of glory. Number 12. Tommy Hansen's Sudden Collapse on the Pitch In the heart of summer, on August 28, 1986, a young man named Tommy Hansen came into the world. He was destined to become a towering figure in the world of American professional baseball, known for his powerful right arm as a starting pitcher. His journey would see him don the jerseys of the Atlanta Braves and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in Major League Baseball. Standing at an imposing 6 feet 6 inches, Tommy Hansen possessed an electrifying combination of a fastball that crackled with energy and a curveball that could make even the most seasoned batters tremble. It didn't take long for him to catch the attention of baseball enthusiasts, and he was soon hailed as one of the most promising young pitchers in the league. But tragically, the promising life of Tommy Hansen would be cut short. On November 9, 2015, at the tender age of 29, he met an untimely demise that sent shockwaves through the MLB community and left his countless fans in mourning. The circumstances surrounding his passing were enigmatic, fueling speculation and sorrow. On that fateful day, Tommy had been at a local event in Atlanta, surrounded by friends, colleagues, and adoring fans who had gathered to see their favorite pitcher up close. However, destiny had a different plan. While on the pitcher's mound, something went terribly wrong. Tommy collapsed, and a frantic call for medical aid ensued. He was swiftly rushed to Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta, but the efforts of medical professionals proved futile. That night, Tommy Hansen was pronounced dead, a victim of catastrophic organ failure attributed to the toxic mix of cocaine and alcohol. The news of Tommy's sudden and tragic passing shook the MLB community to its core. He had been the former Rookie of the Year runner-up a player with immense potential and a beloved friend to many. Teammates, especially those who had shared the field with him during his time with the Braves and the Angels, publicly expressed their grief, remembering him as both a talented athlete and a cherished companion. Throughout his career, Tommy Hansen had been a beacon of talent and promise, thrilling fans with his performances. Over five MLB seasons, he had notched an impressive 49 wins and maintained a commendable earned run average of 3.80. Yet despite his athletic prowess and apparent physical peak, his life was cut short abruptly and tragically. Tommy's passing served as a stark reminder of the hidden dangers that can lurk behind the scenes, even for those who appear to have it all. It brought to light the issue of substance misuse within the world of sports, prompting crucial discussions about prevention. Number 11. Dan Snyder. A fatal car incident on the ice. Dan Snyder was born in February 1978 in the peaceful hamlet of Elmira, Ontario. Nobody could have predicted that this humble Canadian would one day make his mark in the fast-paced world of ice hockey. As Dan grew, so did his passion for the sport. He honed his skills on the frozen ponds of Elmira, dreaming of one day playing in the NHL. His dedication and hard work paid off when he became a forward for the Atlanta Thrashers, living out his childhood dream. But on September 29, 2003, tragedy struck. Dan, along with his teammate Danny Heatley, was involved in a life-altering car accident in the bustling streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Heatley, behind the wheel, lost control of the speeding vehicle, careening it into a wall. The impact was devastating. During the chaotic collision, Dan Snyder was ejected from the vehicle, sustaining severe injuries. The news sent shockwaves through the hockey community, and the entire world held its breath as he was rushed to the hospital. Doctors worked tirelessly to save him, placing him in a medically induced coma to give his body a fighting chance. Despite their best efforts, six agonizing days later, Dan Snyder succumbed to septic shock and complications stemming from his injuries. It was a heart-wrenching loss that shook the hockey world to its core. Number 10. 
Hank Gather's final dunk. In the vibrant world of basketball, there existed a name that resonated with raw energy, electrifying dunks, and an unwavering spirit. Hank Gathers. Born and bred in the heart of Philadelphia, Gathers embarked on a journey that would etch his name in the annals of basketball history. His story unfolded on the courts of Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, where he would shine as a true star. Gathers was renowned for his scoring prowess, a force to be reckoned with on the hardwood. He achieved a remarkable feat that set him apart, becoming one of only two players in NCAA Division I history to lead the nation in both scoring and rebounding in a single season. This exceptional accomplishment marked him as a future NBA star, destined for greatness. The calendar marked March 4, 1990, a day that would forever be etched in basketball lore. Loyola Marymount University's Lions were hosting the Portland Pilots in the West Coast Conference Tournament. The game unfolded as expected, with Gathers showcasing his usual brilliance, dominating the court with his boundless energy and skill. In the midst of the first half, Gathers embarked on one of his trademark dunks. The ball soared through the hoop and the crowd erupted in jubilation. But then, a chilling moment unfolded. Gathers, the indomitable force, began to stumble. It was a scene that defied belief. Tragically, the unthinkable had occurred. Hank Gathers, the embodiment of basketball's spirit, had collapsed on the court. The news of his passing sent shockwaves through the world of college basketball. An outpouring of grief cascaded from teammates, coaches, opponents, and fans alike. Yet amid the profound sorrow, Hank Gathers' legacy endured. Loyola Marymount University, forever touched by his presence, chose to retire the number 44 jersey. It was a gesture that cemented his place in their history, a testament to the indelible mark he had left on the university. Number 9. Patrick E. King's Sad Soccer Incident Patrick E. King, a talented Cameroonian footballer, was a dynamic force on the pitch. Born on March 26, 1990, he made his mark as a midfielder for Dynamo Bucharest in Romania's Liga 1. His energetic performances and football prowess garnered him immense respect among fans and peers alike. It was on May 6, 2016, during a fateful match against Vitorul Constanta, that tragedy struck. A Kang, just seven minutes after being substituted into the game, collapsed. Despite the swift and diligent response of the medical teams present, hope slipped away, and two hours later, he was pronounced dead. The shocking cause of his untimely passing was a heart attack, a reality that sent shockwaves through the global football community. In the wake of this devastating loss, an outpouring of grief engulfed fans, teammates, and even competitors. Patrick E. King had left an indelible mark on the hearts of those who knew and admired him. In response to his tragic departure, Dynamo Bucharest made a poignant gesture by retiring his jersey number 14, ensuring that his memory would forever be honored within the club. Number 8. Tom Simpson, The Demise of Tour de France In the quaint village of Haswell, Nestled in County Durham, England, a promising young lad named Tom Simpson was born on November 30, 1937. Little did anyone know that Tom Simpson would grow up to become one of the most talented British cyclists of his era, etching his name into the annals of cycling history. Oham's crowning achievement came on a scorching day in the summer of 1967. It was July 13th, and the Tour de France was in full swing. The 13th stage of this prestigious race would forever be etched in memory, for it was on that day that Tom Simpson made history. He became the first British cyclist to don the coveted yellow jersey, a symbol of excellence in the world of cycling. But amid the jubilation and the relentless climb up Mount Ventoux in the blistering heat, tragedy struck. As the sun beat down mercilessly, Tom Simpson, pushing his limits, suddenly collapsed on the unforgiving slopes. The cycling world watched in shock as efforts were made to resuscitate him, but destiny had other plans. Later that same day, it was with heavy hearts that the news broke. Tom Simpson had lost his battle for life. The cause of his untimely demise was a harrowing combination of extreme heat exhaustion, severe dehydration, and the effects of amphetamines and alcohol that he had consumed in a desperate bid to combat fatigue. Number 7. Antonio Puerta's Sudden Cardiac Arrest on the Field Antonio Puerta, a gifted footballer hailing from Seville, Spain, was a beacon of technical finesse and versatile playing abilities. Born on November 26, 1984, his journey through the football ranks would leave an indelible mark on the sport. 
Puerta's unwavering passion for the game was evident from an early age. As he rose through the ranks, Antonio Puerta's skills on the pitch earned him a special place in the hearts of Sevilla FC fans and garnered the respect of fellow players. His journey to the top was one marked by dedication and talent. However, tragedy struck on that fateful day when multiple organ failure claimed Antonio Puerta's life. It was a result of prolonged cardiac arrest, later revealed to be caused by a rare inherited condition known as arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. This elusive disease, often undiagnosed, can unleash a dangerously irregular heartbeat during strenuous exercise. In the wake of Puerta's untimely passing, the Spanish Football Federation, RFF, took swift action. They introduced mandatory cardiac screening for all players, a proactive measure aimed at identifying individuals at risk of conditions similar to Puerta's. His tragic departure ignited a broader conversation about the pressing need for adequate medical facilities and trained personnel at sports venues, a crucial aspect often overlooked. While Antonio Puerta's time on the football pitch was brief, his impact was monumental. He was an integral part of the Sevilla team that clinched consecutive UEFA Cups in 2006 and 2007, showcasing his immense talent on Europe's grandest stage. The haunting image of Puerta's collapse serves as a somber reminder of the potential dangers lurking in undiagnosed health conditions within the realm of sports. It underscores the paramount importance of regular medical checks and swift emergency responses. For those who bore witness to that tragic event, it was a stark contrast to the typically joyous atmosphere of a football match, a moment that left an indelible mark on their memories. Today, Antonio Puerta's legacy lives on. In the hearts of his fans, he remains an enduring figure, and in the actions taken to prevent similar tragedies, his influence reverberates. Sevilla FC paid tribute to their fallen player by retiring his number 16 shirt, a solemn gesture of remembrance. The club's training ground was also renamed in his honor, ensuring that Antonio Puerta's memory continues to have a profound impact on the world of football, forever serving as a beacon for athlete safety and the importance of health screenings in sports. Number 6. Bill Masterton ice hockey's unfortunate case. In the world of ice hockey, there was a name that stood out, Bill Masterton. Born on August 13, 1938, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, he was more than just an accomplished forward. He was a player known for his exceptional skills, unyielding drive, and an unwavering passion for the sport. Bill wore the jersey of the Minnesota North Stars in the National Hockey League, where he left his mark. However, tragedy would cast a dark shadow over the ice on that fateful day. It was a game against the Oakland Seals, and Bill Masterton found himself checked hard by two opposing players. The impact sent him tumbling backward onto the unforgiving ice, his head bearing the brunt of the fall. It was a moment that would change the course of history. Bill Masterton lost consciousness immediately, and despite the valiant efforts of those around him, he never regained consciousness. Two agonizing days later, the hockey world received devastating news. Bill Masterton had passed away. The cause of his untimely demise was a massive brain hemorrhage, a stark reminder of the unforgiving nature of the sport he loved. In the wake of this heart-wrenching loss, the NHL was compelled to take action. Bill Masterton's tragic fate prompted the league to introduce and eventually mandate the use of helmets by players. It was a crucial step toward enhancing player safety and preventing similar catastrophic incidents on the ice. The legacy of Bill Masterton, a player whose life was cut short, was instrumental in reshaping the future of the sport. Now, it's time for today's subscriber's pick. Here, we've got an incredible yet sobering photo to discuss. Take a look at this massive heavyweight lifter. It might seem like he's taking an unexpected nap right there under that colossal weight. But the question is, was it a nap of no return? What could possibly drive someone to push their limits to this extent, even at the risk of their own life? Now here's a thought-provoking question for you all. What do you think motivates athletes like him to take on such extreme challenges in the world of weightlifting? Is it the pursuit of glory, the desire to inspire others, or something else entirely? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Number 5. Pero Aguayo, Jr. Fatal Wrestling Bout In the world of professional wrestling, Pero Aguayo Jr. was a name that resonated with charisma, talent, and an unwavering spirit. Born on July 23, 1979, in the bustling streets of Mexico City, Aguayo Jr. followed in his father's footsteps, stepping into the wrestling ring with a passion that would soon captivate fans worldwide. 
he emerged as one of the most iconic figures in Lucha Libre, the Mexican professional wrestling scene, celebrated for his high-flying maneuvers and captivating persona. Tragically, the bright flame of his life would be extinguished in a wrestling bout on that fateful day of March 20, 2015. The event unfolded in Tijuana, Mexico, where Aguayo Jr. teamed up with Monique to face off against the formidable duo of Rey Mysterio Jr. and Extreme Tiger. The match progressed with the usual intensity, and Aguayo Jr. showcased his wrestling prowess to the delight of the audience. Yet, amidst the scripted chaos of the wrestling ring, a fatal incident transpired. During a sequence of events, Rey Mysterio performed his signature move, the 619, intended to hit Aguayo Jr., who was supposed to deftly evade it. However, in a tragic twist of fate, Aguayo Jr. seemed to misjudge the move, and his neck made a devastating connection with Mysterio's leg. He collapsed onto the ropes and then slumped to the mat, unconscious and motionless. Medical personnel rushed to the ring as the match was abruptly halted. Aguayo Jr. was carefully transported to a nearby hospital, but hope faded with each passing moment. In the early hours of March 21st, tragedy struck as Pero Aguayo Jr. was pronounced dead. The cause of his untimely demise was a cervical stroke, a result of three fractured vertebrae. The world of Lucha Libre and its passionate fans had lost a beloved star, a mere 35 years old at the time of his passing. Despite subsequent improvements in safety protocols within professional wrestling, the memory of that harrowing night in Tijuana continues to cast a haunting shadow. It serves as a stark reminder of the inherent risks that athletes willingly embrace in the name of entertainment. For those who bore witness to the incident, it was a shocking moment that brutally shattered the boundary between wrestling's choreographed narrative and the harsh reality of life and death. Aguayo Jr.'s wrestling career had been characterized by his fiery passion, audacious moves, and his remarkable ability to captivate the crowd. His tragic passing, while marking a dark day in the history of professional wrestling, also reaffirms the paramount importance of safety in sports. Number 4. Reggie Lewis Basketball's Heartbreaking Moment Reggie Lewis, born on November 21, 1965 in Baltimore, Maryland, wasn't just your average basketball player. He had agility that made cats jealous, scoring ability that made calculators envious, and leadership skills that would make even a choir of screaming toddlers listen. As the captain of the Boston Celtics in the NBA, he was like the team's North Star, guiding them to victory with the grace of a ballerina and the toughness of a sumo wrestler. Now let's fast break to July 27, 1993, at Brandeis University in Waltham, Massachusetts. It was an innocent off-season practice match, and Reggie was doing what he did best, making basketballs disappear into the hoop. But then, out of nowhere, tragedy decided to crash this hoopla party. Reggie Lewis suddenly collapsed on the court. The whole place froze like a snowman in a sauna. People were asking, is he okay? Is this some kind of slam dunk prank? But no, it wasn't a gag. Despite getting swarmed by medical professionals faster than you can say fast break, Reggie couldn't bounce back. Two hours later, at a local hospital, the unthinkable was confirmed. Reggie Lewis had left the court for good. The culprit behind this heartbreaking drama was cardiac arrest, a curveball that even the best defenders couldn't block. It turned out Reggie had a heart condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which sounds more like a tongue twister than a medical condition. His untimely exit at just 27 years old sent shockwaves through the basketball world, leaving fans and players alike stunned. In Reggie's honor, the Celtics retired his jersey number 35, a gesture that proved he wasn't just another player, he was a legend in green shorts. But his departure did more than just hang a jersey in the rafters. It was like a giant neon sign flashing health matters to athletes everywhere. Reggie's passing was a wake-up call, leading to stricter health screenings in the NBA and other sports organizations. It was as if his final timeout had a ripple effect, reminding us all that no matter how good you are at putting a ball through a hoop, you can't outrun the importance of regular health checkups. So, here's to Reggie Lewis, the man who made us laugh, cry, and appreciate the heart in the game, both on and off the court. Number 3. Ray Chapman Baseball's Grizzliest Incident Ray Chapman came into this world on January 15, 1891 from the town of Beaver Dam, Kentucky. Little did anyone know that this unassuming man would become a skilled shortstop in Major League Baseball and leave an enduring legacy, 
albeit marked by tragedy. Ray's journey in MLB led him to the Cleveland Indians, where he showcased his talents as a shortstop. However, fate had a cruel twist in store for him on that fateful day, August 16, 1920. The Indians were facing off against the New York Yankees at the Polo Grounds, a storied baseball venue. In the twilight of that day, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Ray Chapman faced a pitch from Carl Mays. The ball, discolored by dirt and the fading light, became difficult to track. In an unfortunate twist of events, the pitch struck Chapman squarely in the head. He collapsed immediately, and a sense of dread swept through the stadium. Ray was swiftly rushed to the hospital, but the news was grim. He had suffered a fractured skull from the impact. Despite the best efforts of medical professionals, Ray Chapman passed away a mere 12 hours later. His tragic death remains the sole fatality resulting from an on-field incident in the history of MLB, casting a long shadow over the sport. Number 2. Dale Earnhardt the Intimidator's Last Ride In the wacky world of motorsports, there are a few names that make even the speediest of race cars pull over and show some respect. One such name is Dale Earnhardt, who popped into this world on April 29, 1951, in Kannapolis, North Carolina. They called him the Intimidator, probably because he once challenged a tornado to a drag race and won. Okay, maybe not. But he was a NASCAR legend known for his aggressive driving style and a determination so unyielding that even his car tires were afraid to let him down. Now let's jump into our time-traveling go-kart and zoom to February 18, 2001. It was the 43rd Daytona 500, and Daytona Beach, Florida was sizzling hotter than a racetrack griddle. The fans were as eager as kids in a candy store, and amidst the revving engines stood Earnhardt's famous black number no. 3 Chevrolet, looking as menacing as a NASCAR driver trying to merge on the freeway during rush hour. As the race was nearing its dramatic conclusion, Earnhardt found himself in third place, trailing behind Michael Waltrip and his own flesh and blood, Dale Earnhardt Jr. But in a plot twist even Hollywood couldn't script, during the final lap, Earnhardt's car got into a fender bender that would have made your average bumper car enthusiast yawn. Yet it wasn't your run-of-the-mill crash. His car smacked the outside wall nearly head-on, at a speed that would make your grandma's Sunday drive seem like warp speed. At first, the crash didn't look too disastrous by motorsport standards, but Earnhardt mysteriously decided to ghost his radio calls following the incident. It was like his car had accidentally tuned into a station playing elevator music, and he just couldn't handle the boredom. But alas, it wasn't boredom. It was tragedy. Losing Earnhardt was like running out of fuel inches from the finish line. NASCAR, the racing universe, and even a few aliens passing by mourned the loss of this larger-than-life figure. The racing world came together in collective sorrow, sending tributes from every nook and cranny. Even folks who couldn't tell a lug nut from a donut hole paid their respects. Earnhardt's untimely exit did have a silver lining. It led to some serious safety upgrades in motorsport. NASCAR, in particular, decided to play it safe by making the Hans head and neck support device mandatory. They also introduced safer barriers, which sound like the kind of thing you'd use to keep your grandmother from pinching your cheeks too hard. But they were energy-absorbing walls, designed to soften the blow of crashes. Despite all these changes, that final race image of Earnhardt lingers like the last piece of pizza at a party. It reminds us that high-speed racing isn't all champagne and checkered flags, it can have its hefty costs. But let's not forget, Dale Earnhardt's legacy isn't just about the tragedy of that fateful day. He was known for his aggressive driving, fierce competitiveness, and incredible skill. He's the guy you'd want on your side in a go-kart race against a pack of rocket-powered snails. His passing pushed motorsport safety to a whole new level, proving that even in the world of racing, you can make a lasting impact without ever winning a Mario Kart Grand Prix. Number 1. Chuck Hughes's Unforeseen Collapse In the world of the NFL, there was a figure whose name resonated with determination and talent, Chuck Hughes. Born on March 2, 1943, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he carved his path as an American football-wide receiver. Hughes made his mark in the NFL, proudly donning the jersey of the Detroit Lions. His unwavering commitment to the game earned him a dedicated following among fans. The date etched in history is October 24, 1971, a day that would forever change the landscape of football. 
Tragedy unfolded during a game against the Chicago Bears at the iconic Tiger Stadium. In the prime of his career, Chuck Hughes inexplicably collapsed on the field, untouched by opposing players. In a frantic rush, he was whisked away to the hospital, where medical professionals fought valiantly to revive him. Yet despite their heroic efforts, fate had taken its irrevocable course. Chuck Hughes could not be brought back and the football world was left in shock. The cause of his untimely demise was traced back to atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, a silent assailant that led to a fatal heart attack. Chuck Hughes thus became the only NFL player to pass away on the field during a game, a somber distinction etched into history. As we conclude this journey through the lives of these remarkable athletes, we're reminded of the highs and lows that come with the pursuit of excellence in sports. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.